What's the word, y'all? I can't even lie. I'm starting this video before the game is even over. Uh, Steph Curry just hit another three, which now ties him with Kevin Durant for the most points in a single game seven. It's still five minutes left in the game, so he probably got at least one more bucket in him, which means that Steph Curry would have set a record for the most points in a game seven. This is so crazy to think about. And they're, they're sending two at him every single time, and it has not mattered. And for the first time in a few years, we're getting Steph Curry versus LeBron James in a best of seven series, and I cannot wait. Before we even start talking about that, I want to give my flowers to the Sacramento Kings, man. One hell of a season. And to go from a team that was not expected to do anything to, to not just make the playoffs, but be the three seed and take the defending champions to seven is something you tip your hat off at. Of course, you want to win game seven at home and everything. Um, but I think we can look back on this season and say this was an absolute success by every single metric to get rid of the, the, the drought, to light the beam, to have De'Aaron Fox and DeMont Sabonis both get all NBA considerations. We don't know if both of them are going to make it or one of them is going to make it. Just to have playoff basketball back in Sacramento is, an, is, is great. And we saw it in this series how they packed out the house every single night. So one hell of a one hell of a season and one hell of a series, man. This was the most fun series in the first round. And that's saying something because we got a lot of crazy stuff in the first round. This one was peak. Obviously, Steph Curry is the MVP of the series, but that's kind of given, right? Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney, absolute masterclass of will and effort. I want to remind everybody that going into the playoffs, the Sacramento Kings are one of the teams that allowed the least amount of offensive rebounds in basketball. I think they were like number seventh in the, the lowest given up. You know what I'm trying to say? They were in the bottom third of the league and they allowed offensive rebounds. And in this game seven, win or go home, Kevon Looney in that third quarter was Moses Malone. He, he was Dennis Rodman. He was Wilt Chamberlain. He was Andre Drummond. Yup. Yep, I said Andre Drummond. Go, go look at Andre Drummond offensive rebound and stats from when he was in his prime. Absolutely. He got one of the highest offensive rebound rates in the history of basketball. I know now he's a backup and been on 20 different teams. But prime Drummond was like that. And Kevon Looney matched that and some. And then it got so bad that it wasn't just Kevon Looney. Uh, that, that boy Wiggins got in them. Steph Curry got in for one. When in the third quarter, if the last time I heard him talk about it, it was like 13 offensive rebounds in that quarter alone. And this game would be a lot worse as far as uh, stats go if the Warriors just capitalized on their free throws because they shot terribly from the free throw line, um, at least until the last couple minutes because, oh, it's over. They pulled the starters. 50 of them things. Steph Curry, 50 of them things. Crazy, bro. And you could just feel all of the, the air get sucked out of the arena after the third offensive rebound where Wiggins goes in and try to tip dunk and nope, then Steph Curry get it, then he dribble all around to get in for a layup. This man Steph Curry saw two people all game seven and did not matter. He would dri dribble around you or he was shooting over you. And he was just, he got to 50, man. And this is huge. Uh, obviously, the win matters. But like going into the playoffs, one of the things I personally was most skeptical about was their ability to play on the road. I mean, they showed us all season long that they struggled there, right? And we gave them benefit of the doubt because they are the defending champions, but they're, all the numbers say that, hey man, th this team have no business being the conversations as a contender. They won two games on the road and one of the loudest home court advantages there, there is. Now they're going into Staples, and yes, we're saying Staples still, um, and I don't, I don't know what the vibe is going to be like, but they, they pack out the house too. We talk about the almighty Lakers, right? So they have to do a very similar thing but now they have home court. Yep. They just, they just got to take care of business at the chase. So I'm just all just all around excited about the way this first round ended up being, you know, as a neutral fan and excited about these matchups in round two. Again, Curry versus Braun, they happened in some years, man. It ain't happened in some years. I mean, you can make the legitimate argument that Kevon Looney was the best big in the series. And that that's a series that had Draymond Green and Demonte Sabonis. I don't know if I'm being hyperbolic, but that's as far as impact goes, that's what it felt like because Demonte Sabonis struggled mightily this entire series. I mean, in this game, I think the counting stats say he had an efficient, good game. But if you watch this game, you saw the amount of offensive rebounds that were given up where he's supposed to be the gobbler of the rebounds. He's one of the, the best rebounders in basketball this season. And then the way they played him defensively all series long, where they allowed him to take as many mid-range jump shots as he wanted. And a couple of those he hit, but they didn't allow him to bang. And he's a bruiser. And Draymond Green and Kevon Looney took that right at the chest every single time. And that was a lot different than what Demonte Set Bonus had saw all season long. And now this next series is going to be a little bit diff different because Anthony Davis might be the opposite of Demonte Set Bonus when it comes to physicality, Physi physicality um, where he's more of a finesse big. 
So how does Steve Kerr and, and, and the guys figure out how to guard Anthony Davis? Like, I'm excited about the X's and O's. Um, Darvin Ham versus Steve Kerr. I think I have an idea who has the advantage on the coaching tip. But I honestly do believe having this home court advantage could be one of the determinant factors to who's going to win the series between the Warriors and the Lakers. I did not think that Wiggins was going to come back and look as good as he did. And I know he has some games or probably the entire series, his shooting splits might not have looked as good, but on the defensive side of the ball, he was still there completely. And the same thing with Gary Payton the second, where when they needed somebody to hound, it was him. If Malik Monk was on a little burner, I'd be like, go, go throw Gary Payton in just for a couple minutes and let him slow that down or De'Aaron Fox slow that down. So these dudes that hadn't played for the past, I don't know, month, just come in and immediately make an, a positive impact. Looney ended up with 21 rebounds. That is that is 21 rebounds, and 10 of those were offensive. I always like game sevens because this is where coaches try to throw that little monkey wrench in, where it's like, okay, we've done similar things for the first six games, but they don't have no time to make adjustments. There is no game eight. And what we saw from Steve Kerr is he allowed uh, Moses Moody to be the first guard off the bench. That was a surprise. I mean, we had seen a lot of Jordan Poole and a lot of Dante DiVincenzo throughout the series. It was Moses Moody. Like, wow. And he gave them some impactful, decent minutes. He defended well. I think he hit a shot. That, I mean, he just hit another one on my screen. And garbage time. But I think he hit a shot when it mattered. Um, so overall, I think Steve Kerr coached a good series. Me and the guys were trying to predict Game 7 on the podcast. Which Shams, by the way, was just dope. Shams was on my podcast. Um, and one thing that I, I said I was afraid of is that, like, as long as Steph Curry had been on the court through the first six games, the Warriors have won those minutes by, I think it's 30-something. So just keep Steph Curry on the floor. In the game seven, th there might not be a tomorrow. So we're going to keep Steph Curry on the floor as long as we wanted to. And they did. He played almost 40 minutes, and he probably would have got to over 40 if it wasn't a 20-point blowout. It's hard to believe that this man is 35 years old. You know? For some reason in my mind, he's, he's still 30 or something. He's 35, and he's still at the peak of his powers. He is still in his prime, y'all, at 35 years old. He just had one of his best performances. He's 35. This is not normal. I mean, it might end up being the norm um, as we continue to advance with medicine and all of this stuff. But, like, we normally do not see 35-year-olds small, smaller because he's still 6'2", 6'3", whatever. Smaller point guards have this type of longevity. And, and I don't mean just being good. I mean being great. I mean being the best at his position. I mean being one of the best in the entire world. And that's what he is. And we see that on display all series long because this wasn't just... This wasn't just game seven where he'd been turning up. He's been doing it the entire series. He is an offense in himself, and as long as he's on the court, you can kind of count on your team winning those minutes. And there's not a lot of people in NBA history that you can say that about. Again, the Kings gave a great series, man. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of those dudes. Obviously, it's going to be a ton of emotions. They're, they're going through it with this loss, but they gave us a good series. And DeMont Sabone has been playing with a broken hand for six months. Uh, De'Aaron Fox been dealing with his broken finger. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing excuses, but I'm just saying, like, they went through a lot of, ter not turmoil, but, like, adversity to even get to this point. Um, and, and they, they came and showed out. Just game seven slipped through, through the, through the cracks. Um, get a rebound, bro. Get, that third quarter was all the momentum swing because it was, it was a really close game until that point where they, you, I mean, you talk about 13 offensive boards in one quarter. You know how many extra shots that is? It, in a lot of cases, at least 13. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of extra attempts to score the ball, especially if Steph Curry's on the opposing team. So I don't know how to feel exactly about the series. I got, I got to go in a little bit deeper than just the surface value. But I'm, I'm so very excited to see Steph Curry versus LeBron James again. Um, I think both teams could win the series off rip. I don't know who I would predict to win, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, I, I just want to remind you to enjoy the game, bro. I've been seeing some random stuff on Twitter. And it's actually, I'll just stay off Twitter. Hey, I'll see y'all tomorrow, man.